Previously on Roleplay Radio. Captain. Hello. Hey, Captain. I've gotten some news from my contacts. Apparently, there's a death sentence for myself with a bit of F squad on the side. You mean the Auric? I will take care of figuring out who in my faculty is an Auric. I need you all to find out who the student is. Professor Misha takes mistake outdoors. He, he paces for a bit. I realize I have not been entirely honest with you all year, mistake. During orientation, when I was a student, there was an incident, somebody died, and it was my fault. And he reaches into his bag and hands you a newspaper. It says uh, something along the lines of Red Fell native Mirshak Halvan accidentally, in quotation marks, mm-hmm. kills Tiefling. First, uh, welcome back to campus. I hope your Thank break you. was good. You're friends with Lorene, right? Yeah. So it really felt like she was tokenizing me at first, like, oh, I'm not racist. I have a friend who is not human. But eventually, you know, once you get to know her, she's just kind of aloof. My friend Jordan, she's a Triton. She told me she was coming to the scriptoria and then did not come back to the town. That was three nights ago. Apologies for the inconvenience. Going to go to where I saw Jordan. Yeah, Jordan climbs out of the river, sees all five of you, and Lorene who runs up and hugs her. The thing's been following me. Apologies for the inconvenience. As far as you can tell, there's nothing wrong with it. But you do notice that the thing it's leaking is not oil. It well, we got more Eldritch Balm. And I'm gonna fire against that owl bear. You hear it shrieking, and you're able to notice that uh, on its shoulder, he is smeared with this black oily substance. Of course he is. Eventually you get to Lochiel's workshop in Lorehold. She has her back to you, and she's sitting in this big old chair with wheels, tinkering with an owl. Mm. Make clockwork out. <laughs> and you're able to see a red stone in it that she takes out. This is the crown jewel. You see it? It's this is what helps them remember. Now the owl is just a piece of junk. And she throws it. <laughs> she throws the head and it lands on a pile of like limbs and stuff. She's like, scrap metal, don't worry. It's just scrap. But this is irreplaceable. So how does this contraption work exactly? You. The idea is that the Eldritch Bomb stays inside of the vial, and then the vial is basically contained in a small padded cage, and it's sealed so it can't get Eldritch Bomb on anything else. And then I've got a second one specifically for experimentation, so I take a little bit out of the big one, put it on like a toothpick, put it in the other one, and then see how long it takes, then try some different substances, see how long those take. I don't have any corrupted balm, though, to actually try in it. She walks right up to Gary, and she pulls out a vial of an oily black substance that you're very, very familiar with. I took it from his drawers. That's two of my friends now. Fane, maybe one word from a burning hammer, perhaps, could end a career with a scandal. Griffin, c- come on, come on, uh, you wouldn't do that to your to old fame, would you? I mean, goddamn, I'll give you a chance here, right? Like you. you... I mean, ba- baby, baby, listen, when you threaten my friends like once, oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but, come on. But a second time, Fane, sweetie baby, there's only so much I can do. There are two goblinoids there. Two goblins. Well, Gary, some weird stuff's been happening to me, Gary. You're oh, fucking with the wrong Leonin. <laughs> <laughs> I just take his head, and his head pops. What the fuck have you done? We can fix this. We can, we can fix this. So you've just witnessed uh, Professor Julian casting his ritual Slowly, a lot of that energy that he sucked out of the plants starts to seep out of him and onto the dead bodies. Let's just say that rich boy might have done me a favor. Don't tell him I said that. I ain't that mad. (laughs) Anyway, where's my gold? Four months earlier. Gary. Yes. You've been noticing that Greta, who has the, the room above you, you kept hearing for several nights, Greta crying herself to sleep. Oh, that's awkward. I know. And tonight, 
You get a knock on the door. Yeah. Hey, can I come in? Sure. She walks in and she has red eyes and red cheeks. Uh, are you having an allergic reaction? Because I've had a lot of allergic reactions. I might have something that can help. No, no, I'm good. Um, she sits down in your bed without even asking you. <laughs> <laughs> She's once again wearing like the equivalent of like a gym uniform. She's got like shorts on and like a tank top. And she looks like she's just been working out. In fact, you might have heard her doing reps upstairs before coming down here. Oh, that's sweaty. Okay. Gary. Gary. Are you mad at me still? I mean, kind of. First impressions mean a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, whatever. Look, she starts pacing around. It's like, I said I was sorry, okay? What else do I have to do? I don't. No, I guess I'm not actually mad at you. I just didn't really see a reason to become friends after that, so. <laughs> she steps right up to you and says, you, you were, you were sponsored by the Izzet League, right? Yes. So you know my pain. Um, no, I think they sponsored me to get rid of me. What? I'm. That makes no sense. No, what have you been telling them? Telling the League? Nothing. I mean, I've been writing to my mentor, but not about you. What do you... What do you mean, nothing? Well, was I supposed to be telling them something? What do you mean, nothing? They, uh, did... They sponsored me, and they said they would pay for me if I gave them... She, like corners you against, like, your own corners. Like, if you tell anyone about this, I swear to God, I'll beat you to a pulp. See, this is why we're not friends, Greta. I'm sorry. God damn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, that was too much. That's too much. Gary, did they not ask you for information? Well, no. Like I said, I think they were trying to get rid of me. Uh, according to my mentor, I'm, quote, a bit of a pest. I don't think you're a pest. Thanks. Garrett, they, they asked me for information weekly. They said, they said they would pay for me to come to this school if I gave them information. What, what kind of information? You know Koss is sponsored by the League as well, right? Does Koss have to give them information? I don't know, I haven't asked. She grabs you by the collar and takes you out and takes you uh, upstairs to Casa's room. Knocks on your door. Who's it? It's me and Garrett. Oh, um, come in. And she basically shoves Garrett in and like closes the door. We need to settle this once and for all. Are you, are you doing okay? No. Is the Isn't League asking for information from you two? Information from us too? Uh, not that I can think of. What do they want information on? You see a tear going down her cheek and she immediately starts doing push-ups. They're asking me information on potential dropouts so that they could recruit and they uh, hold on, hold on, keep hold on. telling me that what? Just take a second. Um, everything is going to be okay. Can you tell me more about the Is It League people that you've spoken to? Uh, well, they told me not to tell anybody, but I... Do you have a pull-up bar here? Mm, I have an easel. No, I'm just gonna use your bed. And she, put, <laughs> she tucks her feet under your bed and she starts doing, like, sit-ups. Okay. They're telling me that I can, I can come to the school for free if I give them information on any potential dropouts so that they can recruit but then, recently, they've been pressuring me more and more to give them information about teachers, too, and I don't like it, and I hate it, and I told them I'm not comfortable, and now they're saying they might pull my funding. Pete, how did you meet the, these people? My parents work for the League. I guess they, they, 
were offered this opportunity and they were very proud and they said, hey, you're going to college. And I said, oh, wonderful. And then they were like, but. And How do you talk to them? They send an owl to my window. Like a normal one? A normal owl to okay. my window once every few days. And I'm expected to have something to give the owl and then the owl leaves. And recently their messages have gotten more threatening. And I don't know what to do. They're saying that I need to start eavesdropping on professors, stay after office hours, ask them stuff, and now they're saying I should sneak. Um, Gary, are you thinking what I'm thinking here? I th have a guess? What? Greta, I don't think that these people are actually uh, from the League. Or... If they are from the League, they're not from a part of the League we particularly want to associate with. So, um... Okay, let's start here. First year is already paid for. They, they had to pay the whole thing in advance, right? I guess so. So they can't actually do anything for the next year. Huh. I, I mean, I guess when you... I guess not. So, cost your water skin? Ah, uh, yes. Fuck em! <laughs> what was that? Ah, that's, um, Gary gave this to me in case I ever, um, forget about how to deal with bullies. Can you see it? Yeah. She presses the button. Fuck em! <sighs> she presses it again. Fuck em! Do, do you wanna keep it so I can get a second one? <laughs> I couldn't. Um, listen, Gary, that's... I'm really sorry about... Being such a jerk to you, I... They were asking me to eavesdrop on students first, and that's why I pushed you. Certain students that they wanted me to eavesdrop on would come along, especially my friend Xanther, and I didn't want to involve you in this mess. Uh, who else have they asked you about? Well, there's uh, one girl also from Xanther's Tower who's got turquoise hair saying that she needs money. So... Lorene. Lorene, yeah. Yeah, they're saying that she might need money and she might be a good candidate because she might drop out soon. And uh, there's a couple of others. There's some girl from the Strixhaven store, and there's. Mm. Tell you what, if they keep on threatening you, let us know because I've got a group of friends that are pretty, um, we're pretty badass, and we can help. If you hear me crying again, I'm sorry. It's okay I... to cry. Yeah. My dad didn't think so. But I'm glad you do. Okay. You guys want to get dinner somewhere? I can cook something? That works too. Just no, no garlic. You know, it's all mysteriously disappeared from the tower. I don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to sessions two, mistakes saying I've been stealing it. <laughs> Somewhere in mistakes room is just a drawer that had been too much. So you threw a successful party, kind of. You asked some questions, got some answers, Koss got some thoughts. How I wanna know how Koss is feeling since this was Koss had the most insight of, of the whole entire party because of the, t the tech thoughts. Yeah, I think they have shared the Spark Notes version of the thoughts with everybody who was there, which meant that Shelly didn't quite get it. But they are probably more confused right now because nobody seemed like a clear lead. The closest thing to somebody who could have been it would have been Aurora because both Quintilius and Xanthus' thoughts were as if they were not Auric, even if they might have sympathized in some certain ways. I think they are more concerned now because they were hoping that this would give the group a clear lead. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's not very clear, right? Even thoughts can be... You can guard your thoughts to, to only think a certain way and not just think, oh, I'm an Auric. Um, I'm an Auric! I'm an Auric! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Everyone who's the Auric, please think that you're an Auric. <laughs> Alright. When Koss has painting class, you all have arcane artifacts. And we are getting to the end of the school year, therefore, 
you are all taken to Pillar Drop, a giant dig site. It's mostly for those who have yet to find their magic item or build it. Some of you might already have it. However, today it's Loshiel who is teaching the class, for obvious reasons. She rolls in in her wheelchair, she's in her prime, she's got an RC with her, uh, her backup. And you are all taken down to Pillar Drop. Some areas you have to repel down. In fact, why don't you all roll me an acrobatics check for repelling <laughs> down safely? You can have a harness, but it still takes some, some agility. Fifteen. Ten. Fifteen. What, what kind of check was this? Acrobatics. I got a five. <laughs> oh, boy. That okay. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, the gruesome twosome is able to make it down safely. <laughs> Griff, uh, Griff does it a bit more competitively. He hasn't told you that he's being competitive, but like, he's just trying to go faster than you. He's like, <laughs> he got beat. Mistake has completely forgotten about all of this. <laughs> Does not process that any of this is happening. She is far too much in her own head about everything else. And so despite that, y'all still make it at the same time, right? Because you yeah. hold the same thing. Yeah. Team, yeah. There's like five ropes and yeah, there's, there's five students at a time that could make it down. So I'm picturing Gary's doing well for the first half. And then he starts putting too much force on his boots that rocks start falling on the heads of the students below. Oh no. <laughs> and just you're like, ow, asshole. Watch Sorry. It. And then to make matters worse, Shelly is right above you. <laughs> starts slipping. <laughs> you just hear Loshio shouting like, hang on to the rope, darling. Hang on to the rope, darling. No, no. Shelly's- My fingers don't hold on. <laughs> Gary, you might want to hurry, darling. Oh, Gary, hurry, hurry. I'm trying to hurry. <laughs> and eventually, Shelly stumbles on top of you, and you both kind of stumble the last five feet. Can RC come to the rescue? Can RC do a sleight of hand to see how fast he is able to catch them? Sleight of hand, sure. I mean, five. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure he didn't have a deck score. RC tries to make it in time, but they land right at RC's feet. RC looks down and says, Silly students. It is not yet the fall semester. Put him. <laughs> I'd be a lot funnier if I was not in pain right now. Oh, I'm sorry, Gary. It's fine. Do you need me to carry you? No, just moving off of me. Oh. Would help. Okay. Shelly rolls into a ball and rolls away. <laughs> Very well, class. Today we will be actively digging. Everyone grab a pick, uh, grab a helmet, and what we are looking for is uh, materials that can aid you in building a magic item. That could be metal, that could be dust, any magical component that will aid you. You should have already researched what you want to do. You might have an idea. So uh, I will be here if you have questions and the clockwork servants are here to aid you. Any questions? Shelly raises their hand. Yes. What do you do if you already got your item? You have tea with me, darling. <laughs> and watch. <laughs> Loshio will say, be true to your personality. Any objects you already own could be magical. If you just turn them magical. So, Loshio, I know exactly what I need. I don't think I'm going to really find it here exactly. Um. Is this uh, an illegal matter, darling? No, no, actually, no, no. Okay, because just... I was going to say we should go to the back if you want to talk about that. <laughs> I mean, I would be more than happy to talk about that, but actually, what I need is just more oddly specific. And I think there's a specific thing I can use as a substitute, uh, but it is not here. It's more in your workshop. My workshop? What do you want, a clockwork servant? Uh, no, no, um... A gear? I mean, a stone of remembrance. Oh my. Those are counted, darling. Or a fragment of one? Hmm. You read my mind. Tell you what. Arcee. Yes? And uh, she writes something down. Say, Why don't you go on a little errand for me? Fetch me uh, this from my uh, bottom left drawer of my desk, please. Scanning. Scanning. I will go. Thank you. You'll have to do the hammering yourself to split it. You have the muscle for it. And she looks over at Griff where he is wielding a pickaxe, presumably. <laughs> He's got two. Why do you charm? 
I beat him in arm wrestle. So. You beat him in arm wrestling? On a dare, actually. Wow. Shelly turns to Lucio. Can I have just the boiling water? Uh, she pours some in a cup. It's like. Uh, don't burn your tongue? Is this a turtle thing? Oh no, um, I'm not allowed to drink right now anything except water. Says who? Aurora. <laughs> so, Gary tried to focus on the class for like two minutes then was just kind of aimlessly pickaxing and was like, oh, 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 sulfur, you know, I haven't tried that yet. And he like puts some of it in a way in a pouch and keeps getting distracted by other minerals of like, oh, I haven't mixed this with Eldritch Bomb to see what happens. And so instead of focusing on the actual assignment and thing he's meant to be doing, just starts collecting a bunch of stuff to be like, I'm gonna try all of these things and see if any of them help to nullify the Aldrich Bomb. This implies that Gary's back. RC will eventually bring back a little something wrapped in a handkerchief, give it to a little shield, but she's giving Aurora a stern talking to for now. <laughs> About bullying. <laughs> um, the state gets close enough to eavesdrop? Who do you think you are? Telling, bullying other first years and telling them what they can and can't drink? What's wrong with you? Just because you have an uncle in the staff, in the faculty doesn't mean that you get uh, to bully um, people. The, the, pr professor Lushiel, um, I'm in the middle of something. But no, writing is part of the job and it's one of my favorite Yes, but parts. it was, it was truth or dare. And the dare was to only drink water for a few days because Shelly has a bit of a drinking problem. Oh shit. So Aurora was actually just trying to help a friend? I didn't say I was perfect, did I? <laughs> <laughs> she just like rolls away and then Aurora's like, I was trying to tell her that but she wouldn't let me get a word in. I, I... Yeah, it seemed that way. You uh, alright? Yeah, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. How is it that your friend manages to create chaos by just sitting there. <laughs> no idea. <sighs> okay, I need to look for a certain type of metal for a pick. What are you doing? Ah, uh, breaking a rock. Oh, Raya! Uh, Catch! Mistake doesn't. It just hits her in the <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> what the hell was that? I don't know. <laughs> Aurora picked it up. <laughs> it looks like a ruby, but it's pretty huge. Oh, uh, that might have been meant for me. But she said Raya and threw it at you? Yeah, that's why it's weird. Is that Luxodon for catch? Maybe. Your guess is as good as mine. You want it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need metal, not that. <laughs> Can you roll me? I assume you're going to be the one uh, trying to hammer it and splitting it in half? Uh, she's going to try. It's going to be a difficult one. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Cool. 15 plus 6. 21. Nice. Alright. Let's say that this kind of stone, if you heat it up, it becomes easier to chip. You do that for some of the class period and you're able to chip away at it until you get just enough for... Is this you prompting me to explain what she's doing? Yeah. All right, so she's going to work on setting this into her earring. There's probably something more that she needs to do to make this actually work. Mm -hmm. There's an existing magical item called Mirror of the Past, in which you can hold the mirror up and it will show you a vision of the history of a particular item or person. Mistake hates the idea of having to carry a mirror around. She's like, well, that's bullshit. I want something that's not easily stolen. So she's adapting it into an earring of the past that won't give her a vision, or if it does give her a vision, it's more psychic. So it's sort of implanting the images or thoughts and sounds into her brain or just being audible directly from the earring. And the material that she needed, per me, uh, <laughs> was 
glass from the sand of an expired hourglass in order to make the glass mirror. So she thought, well, you know what? I bet I can use a stone of remembrance instead and set that into the silver earring mm -hmm. as opposed to into the silver mirror casing. Yeah. Can I say the last step that's needed is in relation to the, uh, in the Hall of Oracles, the little thing that gave us a vision of our future? Oh, yeah, yeah, that? yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That energy from that snarl, filtered or unfiltered, alters yeah. things. And she's not even looking at the snarl itself, just specifically the pawn that they all touched. Yeah. Because Stone of Remembrance is based on past, and that's based on future. Mm -hmm. So now she's like, mm -hmm. great, now it will record. Yeah. I want to say at this point, Gary's wearing one of these cages that he's got the like Eldritch Bomb in as a backpack. And he just sort of was like, oh, hi, sorry, I'm just walking up and down the stairs to see if movement helps. And then he just starts walking back down. <laughs> Griff, Griff left a note on Gary's door that says, just as he talks, uh. So. <laughs> You write the word, uh. <laughs> right, uh. And then like an ellipses. <laughs> Would you mind coming downstairs when you have a minute? I have a favor. Sign Griff. <laughs> so let's see that. What, what is Griff doing when Gary shows up? He's doodling. Okay. You see Griff doodling and over his shoulder you can also see some paperwork that says uh, his job has been changed from being a janitor to being a clerk for the Entrepreneurial Society per the request of one Bjorn Burning Hammer. It has clearly been crumpled as if a clawed hand <laughs> paw had crumpled it and then it just kind of uncrumpled over time. Uh, so Gary's like shifting side to side as he's standing there still trying to keep this eldritch bomb moving. Um, so, I... Thanks for not, coming. Not to snoop. Yeah? But you're working for the Entrepreneurial Society now. Uh, it depends on who you ask. Well, I mean, I was part of the Entrepreneurial Society until I started helping with the play. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. I didn't think that your interests really aligned. They don't. This is what my interests should be aligning with. <laughs> my dad. Ah. Well, you know, fuck him. <laughs> yeah, so um, I thought that it would be fun to maybe put a bug in Fane's office, and I thought you could help with that. A bug like an insect? Like, uh, all right, so I have that standing stone with, with Bart. Yeah, your, your headphones. I want to be able to put something in Fane's office so that I could have, like, live hearing tracking. One is the receiver and one is the the sender. And I could have the other one on my ear and I could just like listen to see if, you know, he's doing some shady stuff like he did with us and letting people in like goblins and giving them permission to come in here and with the auric it just doesn't seem good. And so it's either its own thing completely or it's linked somehow least worth trying to figure it out. Can I use that parchment there? And <laughs> there are lots of doodles that you would, would see. <laughs> so he just flips it over, starts drawing some stuff. He's like, well, I mean, I don't think we could have any kind of constant monitoring, but if we hooked up a sending stone like this to an alarm, we could get the first 25 words he says whenever he comes into his office. Uh, we'd have to renew the alarm every eight hours or so from the outside. Um, and he sort of hands back this like picture and it's just like a stone wrapped in some wire and then there's just a bunch of calculations on the yeah. side. <laughs> I like that. I love that. At some point, uh, mistake, the way that I picture this, and this is totally me not shipping these two characters, <laughs> is uh, the Gowanda Tower is across, you know, the courtyard. Yeah. But you can still see it from your windows. 
Jordan at one like starts. I think she's up higher in the tower as well, so she'd mistake her at eye level, <laughs> and so she starts getting a habit of writing little notes like "Hi," like. <laughs> She has like a little whiteboard or a chalkboard that she can make like <laughs> from across the courtyard. And then eventually like says, uh, hang out tonight? Question mark. <laughs> Mistake asks, where? She writes here. <laughs> Mistake debates, like, oh, Lorene, it's probably fine. <laughs> okay. Mistake is going to, before going over to the other tower, is going to stick their head out, see Gary, and let him know that she's going to be over at Golwanda Tower, just so someone in the group knows, mm -hmm. in light of, you know, the yeah. possible assassination attempt on all of our lives. Yeah. But she's going to actually go out her window to avoid everything that's going on downstairs. Oh boy, <laughs> okay. Roll me an acrobatics check, just to see okay. how well you, you get down. It's, it is high up. Um, that's a 15 plus, I think, 6. Okay, yeah, I should have been... There was no agreement that I would go straight up to that window, so I'm going to be polite and use the front door. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and knocks on the front door. It's open. Opens the door. You see uh, Rampart sitting in a corner next to the fireplace, reading a big old textbook, smoking a pipe. Oh, it's you. What, uh, what is going on? I'm here to see Jordan. Oh. Ace the door and stairwell. Close door behind you, please. Mage hands the door shut. <laughs> oh, you're not partying with your, uh, your F squad today, huh? <laughs> Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of the big parties that's mostly Shelly's doing. Mm. Yeah, Little parties I hear are that. Good. Little parties are good. Big ones, not so much. Thank you, by the way, for inviting me to yours earlier. It's good size. Good size craft. I agree. I was much more in favor of that one. You are doing alright, Rampart? I'm fine. Just, you know, focusing on studies and duty. What sort of things does your duty have you doing? Well, I plan to stay in Dragon's Guard next year too, which means uh, we'll get to start doing out-of-campus jobs, errands, scout missions, stuff like that. It's very uh, exciting for someone who's military-minded, even if it was thrust upon me by my family, kind of, maybe, a little bit. Yeah, that seems to kind of go around. I won't say the skills are not useful. Who knows? You encounter someone you might want to swing at, you're ready. Whoosh, if you know what I mean. Yes, actually. Especially, you know, first day of school being attacked by a chest. Yeah. But, you know, you are here for you. I'm here for me, yes. So, make sure some of the things you're partaking in are for you, not for your family. Oh. Uh, can I be honest with you? Of course. You know about the whole dichotomy? Uh, hold. I assume you're going Lorehold, it's kind of obvious. <laughs> it is. I mean, with the way you love books, uh, one point I'm trying to make is even if when you're in a college you have to choose a side, white or red in Norhold's case, uh, my whole family leans red, but well, I, I lean white, but they don't know that. <laughs> they think actions are everything and uh, you know, you should be out there pursuing adventure and all that and yeah, okay, sure. But, there's something about a good book, you know, mistake? Yeah, I know. Anyway, Lorraine's upstairs, sorry. Uh, just... <laughs> just say Lorraine yep, is upstairs. Yep. <laughs> uh, mistake's <laughs> just associated the two of them in his mind. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mistake not? thinks about correcting him, just, no. <laughs> and heads up, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the same layout, is very familiar with which one is eight. <laughs> yep, yep. 
And knocks on that door. Lorene answers. No, <laughs> no it, it is Jordan, but she goes, shh. On the way up, you would have heard some cries behind door number uh, three. <laughs> because that's where Gary is, and I just think it's fun. <laughs> Stay creeps in. Lorene doesn't know I'm here. I just, I told her I was going out with friends. Oh, I missed it. Sorry, she's been a lot lately, and I just need a break. That's, that's fair. Can I offer you water or something, anything? Uh, water's fine, sure. As she's pouring, she just starts talking like, did you hear about her dad? Yeah. Got sent to Rundlestrom Prison is not out for parole for another ten years. It's pretty bad. She's not taking it very well. Yeah, I don't blame her. She seemed to really care about him. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, she's nice and all in doses. <laughs> and nice to certain people, anyway. Yeah. So anyway, uh, she, she like, <laughs> is a little awkward around you, doesn't know what to say. <laughs> Eventually, she finds a window. She's like, can I talk to you about something? Of course. It's, it's talking shop. Do you mind? <laughs> no, not at all. Okay. She had, a, like, a, I don't know, like a blanket or something up against the wall. She removes it to show a big whiteboard, bigger than the one she uses to send you notes. It and she's got all sorts of uh, equations, some of which do not look related to the other. Some of them look like it might have just been homework and she, she wrote something down and left it there for ages. But at the center of it is a drawing of what looks like a claw with different labels on it. So I ran the numbers. Remember what happened before winter break? I mean, how could you forget? <laughs> a lot of things happened. Which thing? The owlbears. Yes. Great. And she, like, reveals a like a, a specimen jar that she kept an albert claw submerged in some kind of liquid it looks pretty gross I, I know there are things that have been happening throughout the school year i've been trying to not to pay it any mind because it's a magic school and chaos is just naturally going to happen because of that but points you know both at the jar and at her notes and she's just like the rate of decay on these things was off I thought they looked weird, and I just kind of shrugged it off because everyone was panicking. But then one of them, Rampart, sliced his arm off, and I kept it. And I studied it. The teachers never told anybody this. I don't know why, but the owlbears were already dead. Some of them, this one specifically, for at least two weeks based on the rate of decay. This means... Whoever's doing this still can't corrupt living things, right? I heard some people panicking, saying, well, the Eldritch Bomb can corrupt living things now. Well, these owlbears were dead. So, that's all. I just, I, uh, I don't know if you knew anything. I'm just fascinated, and uh, I want to know more. I didn't know they were already dead, was mostly focused on making them... Well, dead again. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, mostly surviving it. Well, at least we have some good news, right? They can't infect living, living things, things yeah. so that is good. But then that also means they killed a bunch of owlbears. Well, we have heard that there was a lot of poaching going on recently, and then some of them mysteriously just died. Whole herds went missing, and I guess now we know where they went. Because yeah. Was anybody stacking owlbears in a fucking cave or something? <laughs> Just waiting for this? Oh, imagine how bad that would have smelled. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't want that job. No. You know, the whole year I've been sitting here theorizing and hiding my theories from Lorraine because she's a bit of a blabbermouth. <laughs> watching from afar. Yeah. I know what that's like, actually. In a way. Oh. Having... Lots of theories, and no one to really tell them to. The toothpick wall thing, you know, the push pin with the strings. Yes, and exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Mistakes has some sort of conspiracy board alike yeah. somewhere. <laughs> Speaking of which, where are your friends tonight? Luckily, you know, Griff, that because you are no longer there, Fane's working overtime tonight. 
So he is around his office tonight. Griff has his keys. Fane's been expecting them for a couple weeks now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's been expecting you to return your keys and your... Uh, it's the jumpsuit. It's uh, my personalized broom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. While Gary was doodling, Griff was doodling, and they combined doodles. And so Griff has like the plans of where to plant it, and you have the plans on how to make it. And I think Gary's already made it. He like right. spent some time making it. All right. I, I'm picturing the two of you sneaking through these dark hallways because it's at night, even though there's still people around. It's still kind of dimly lit. Griff, Griff wears his janitorial garb. He's not giving anything back. Uh, that, that's not in his plan. And so... Oh, man. Along the way, you cross a hallway and you hear Fane's voice. I, I like to imagine that we're like kind of up against the wall, like old timey <laughs> Robert is pretending to hug the wall. So he's talking to like a secretary. Uh, yeah, sweetheart, so... Uh, there's one of my old employees, Griffin Bernie Hammer. So have you got that equipment from him, sweetheart? What do you mean, no? Well, you better get to it, or else that's going to come right up your paycheck, all right? All right. And he just taps, and you hear him walking away from you, too. Uh, okay. So, when we get in there, you're going to have to put it in place, and I'll watch your back. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take about 10 minutes to cast the alarm spell. Okay. Um, but from then on, we can do it from the other side of the door so we don't have to go inside. Okay, let's go. I mean, keeping in mind that this is, of course, like a convoluted thing that we've made up. Okay. Alarm specifically tells you when something enters a room. And so my thinking was you could link that to the sending stone. Yeah, yeah. The first 25 words he said after he entered, but then it's not gonna trigger again until he enters his office again. Oh. Or someone else comes in. Or somebody else comes in. Ah, yeah, so anytime okay, okay. anyone crosses that threshold, it's gonna get the first 25 words they say. I think even though Gary is quite tall, Griffin is taller. Yeah, and he yeah. might get Griff to like put it up. Like, oh, can you just pop it on the <laughs> molding there? And right where the, the molding is, is a, a self-portrait of Fane done by Fane, which is redundant, but it's, it's Fane's image. Yeah. What if instead of Griff putting it up in place, Griff picks up Gary? Oh, God. And then <laughs> there are footsteps approaching your direction. Can we roll some stealth checks? <laughs> Great. That is an eight. And a nine. Oh, jeez. The both of you roll over the floor together. Griff, insecure about his right arm, overthinks about his arm being weak in the arm wrestling contest and it just oh starts to quiver and yes. drops. Ow! Oh. I'm I sorry. My. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were in the iron lifters. I am. But. <sighs> Shit! Don't, don't talk. Is someone there? I. Hello? I would like to use my elixir of transformation to uh, turn into Fane. Oh! Oh, wow, good. You hear keys jiggling. The door opens. And this elven lady wearing glasses with her hair in a bun, and she's got like a nice little blazer and a clipboard. She's like, oh, hi, Mr. Fane. Is this the person that Fane was talking to before? Yeah. I thought you went the other way. Oh, um, honey, sweetie, baby. Ah, uh, you must not have been paying very good attention. Why are you putting on that voice, Mr. Fane? Oh, uh, sorry, uh, I was, um, watching the Prismari students and you know, their, their accents. Right. Right. Yeah, he was, uh, he was helping me. Hi. Uh, um, he was, was helping me with my Mr. performance. Mr. Birmingham. Uh, oh, you two found each other. Yes, I was just um, reclaiming young Griffin's jumpsuit. Uh, but as right. he is wearing it, 
I figured that it might be better if we do it later. I said I would get it dry cleaned. Very respectful to the occupation in that way. Roll a performance check with advantage. Ooh. Because Griff's helping. Griff's here. And performance or deception? Either. Ooh, I can do deception because I get a student die Ooh. for that one. Cool. That's excellent. 14. There's definitely something that she catches like, Mr. Fane's acting weird. I think she'll let it go and she's just like, all right, I'm sorry to have interrupted, Mr. Burninghammer, sir. Pleasure to be in your presence. Uh, Mr. Fane, I will have that paperwork in your desk uh, come uh, Monday morning. Right, yes, just uh, quickly remind me what that paperwork was for. <laughs> you told me not to speak of it, sir. Oh, uh, we can trust Griffin. <laughs> okay, that's for the uh, extra large Leonin sized jumpsuit and keys for the for the visitor. Yes, right. Thank you for the reminder. And then something clicks. She's like, oh, okay, I see what's going on. Okay, all right, no worries. Say no more, Mr. Fane. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> what? What did that person think was happening? Um, best guess? Sounds like a member of your family is coming to visit in the same way that the goblins did? Oh boy. Oh, okay. I think, uh, this is bigger than us. Maybe we should tell other... everybody else. So, not Dapplewing, just the f squad. Yes. Okay. Big, bigger than us says... Gary and Griff. Okay. The G Squad. <laughs> oh my God. Or maybe we're a unit. You know how when you enter a college in year two, you're supposed to pick an alignment and they room you with someone who aligns with the opposite color? Yeah, yeah, I've heard about it. So because I align with blue and Lorraine aligns with green, she really wanted to be roommates, but I heard that they let you choose. They tell you if you have a preference, who would you absolutely not want to room with, who you, would you be okay rooming with. Don't tell her, but I, I put Lorraine down as do not. Yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I know it's going to come back to bite me, but I just, I can't. I can't. So, think, I'm so glad I'm getting that off my chest because, oh my god, she will not stop talking about how she's going to decorate our room and I don't know how to tell her. Oh, that sounds a bit overbearing. So do you have any prospective people that you might room with? I, no, honestly, I didn't think I'd... You go on lower hold, right? I mean, it's obvious. You know, you're the second person to say that to me and honestly, I've never thought about it. You work at the Biblioplex, if the rumors are true. You will slap a bastard if they do anything to books. <laughs> the signs are there. <laughs> I suppose. Then perhaps I shouldn't tell you all the books that I've stabbed over the last few months. The servant that was down there, covered oh. in eldritch balm, right. of course got it on random books, so every now and then you go to move some books around and they just decide they want to try and bite you. <sighs> I'm sorry to hear that. You know, at this point, you would think someone would create an antidote for that thing. You'd think, but everyone who could do that just seems to prefer putting their heads in the sand and pretending it's not happening. Well, somebody ought to do it. Are you volunteering? I'm a theory gal. You need somebody who aligns greed to put stuff to the test, really. I mean, I just, yeah. Then do you have any theories? Well... I think that in order to find an antidote, you need a sample of the real thing. Done. Done? Well, not me personally, it's... But I know someone who has it. Okay. Say theoretically that someone who has it is uh, running tests on my theories. They might know, see here, and she points to that uh, air has a lot to do with it. So if there's high winds, it'll trigger faster. At least, if, if the owlbears are anything to, sh to... This is all theory, <laughs> but all I'm saying is if, if air is what triggers it, high winds, pressure... Triggers it faster. Yeah. Something to think about. If 
one of your friends was indeed testing, they might want to know this. I'll let him know. I think right now he's taking ah. it for a walk. I mean, that's one way to get some fresh air into it. It's in a box. A so box. I don't I don't think it's actually getting any fresh air. I think it's just moving. Just like a, just like a crate or like a I think it's a box can... inside of a box. Can I come see it? If, if you want to get away from the rain, you can go across the yes, courtyard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As she's like gathering her stuff to like go on a field trip, <laughs> she's like, "By the way, um, Professor Mirsha paid me a visit. Uh, told me some things that were a little difficult to hear. Did he pay you a visit? Yeah. Did he tell you things too? Yeah. He gave me a newspaper. Hmm. What sort of things? Oh, just something about him murdering somebody yep. during his own orientation? Yeah, yep, also got that talk. A tiefling? Yeah. I'm sorry? How, how do you feel about it? I, I don't... Well, unsurprised. Why? He's a human from Redfell. But, he, but he's nice. He seems it. A lot of people seem it until... until it matters. At least trying to be nice now. But at the end of the day, I don't think I'm really a person to him. I think I'm a charity case to make himself feel less guilty. You know, I did some research and she um, pulls out some newspapers of her own that she dug up. Apparently, the, uh, the tiefling he killed was named Lore. Interesting. I mean, the guilt must really be eating him up inside. I saw him jump into a book saying lore. You know, I just thought it was like, you know, because he's lore-bold and very much on the white side of lore-bold and... Yeah. Kind of made sense, but also kind of weird, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. To use the virtue name of the person you theoretically accidentally murdered years ago as a command phrase for a magical spell. Yeah, yeah. The story is apparently like they just they had a disagreement and they scuffled and Professor Mirsha like got off because it was an accident, fell on my sword type of thing. Yeah. Well. Well, I'm sorry. I mean, I didn't. It made me uncomfortable. I can only assume it made you uncomfortable. Yeah. It does, but you know. I just don't see someone like him being uh, racist. For lack of a better term, something must have happened. Maybe, maybe the tiefling did something to. Never mind. <laughs> to anger him enough, or maybe make him defend himself. It's possible. Don't really know. I don't think he's a bad person. Not now, anyway. If he was a bad person, then he's really trying very, very hard to make up for it. Yeah. That's something. Yeah, I mean, he is why both of us are here. True. And uh, I also figured out that most of the people he... Actually, all of the people that he sponsors are non-human. I don't know how to feel about that. Yeah, me neither. Let, let's, let, <laughs> let's go see about that box. <laughs> <laughs> well creep down the stairs, and if Rampart's still in the common room, we'll just sort of <laughs> mo motion with like a finger to the lips to be quiet as we creep out the front door. I think my to-do list has more or less been covered, okay. um, because the other things that she hasn't technically done don't need to be seen, which was telling or encouraging Retta to apply for the Burning Hammer Scholarship, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and sending that op-ed to the newspaper that I mentioned to you. Gary and Griff are big chatters when they're together, at least. The two uh, boys. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, we're walking, we're walking back, back in the woods. <laughs> walking back in the woods. Just... Other than, you did good stuff back there. <laughs> um, thanks. Uh, I'm, 
I just, I mean, I whipped up this elixir of transformation this morning for practice, and then I had it. So it was convenient. That's good. Yeah. I mean, it was really helpful. <laughs> After like a long pause, Gary's just like, yeah, it went better than the last time I used it, which was <laughs> when I told Rampart that I was goth. Yeah, how's that going, by the way? Oh, he doesn't like me very much. Yeah, I can imagine. He's tried hard to find love, I think, that guy. Um, I, I guess good for him. <laughs> Back to the side of the cricket. So that night, after the protest, after a little partying, where is this happening, Gary? You know, I don't know. I don't know where a good place for him... Is there like a place if you actually had a legitimate visitor coming to campus that you would meet them? Oh boy. The underground uh, tunnel system. I was, the first thing that came to my mind was the underground tunnels. Yeah, oh, I'm sure I was right. Place. But I don't think there's an official place for visitors other than like a visitor center or something and it would be too legit for the goblins to stay. <laughs> so yeah, he probably like had sent a letter being like, you know, oh, I have the, the remaining payment if you wanted to come to Strixhaven. The visitor's office hours are at these times. And instead he gets a reply that's just like, yeah, that's not gonna work for us. How about this day late at night, Strixhaven tunnels? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Terrific. Great. Come alone. <laughs> Unmarked coins only. Where are we going? <laughs> so I killed a guy. Yeah, we never really talked that through still. That's okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, he's coming here. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, you know, not to fight us this time, hopefully. Okay. We're just going for support. Yes. Okay. Do and you really because you I all contributed be? to the statue fund. The what? The statue fund. You all contributed. Griff raises a good point. Should he be here? Should I even... I... I mean... Do you want to be here? I want to be supportive, but I also, you know, thumb across the neck and have a motion to one of their guys. Uh, I mean, I don't know. He seems kind of happy with his situation now, but also does not seem to like you. So, you know. Do you feel like you need protection? Um, hopefully not. Okay, I will, um, I'll be behind you and I'll hide outside and then give him the old surprise if we need to do something. You hear a cart rolling towards you in this tunnel and you see a petite little figure approaching you, whistling. Can I be hiding? Oh, absolutely. Stealth check, please. Yeah. Take an inspiration if you would. 15 plus 3. Is 18. 18. Okay. These underground tunnels, I guess, have like little cutaway points where you can kind of, you know, hide around the corner or mm -hmm. something. Closets all over the place with, with uh, janitorial equipment and you hide in one Secret of Secret built in broom closets. Yeah, exactly. And Griff is there while the other four are waiting. As this person comes to the light, is what looks like a gnome carrying like a little card of uh, goodies, of candies. Dangerous. And then the closer he gets, you realize it's not a gnome at all. That's a goblin with makeup. And he's got a little bat on his shoulder. And he's just like... <laughs> and he finally arrives. Well, hello there. <laughs> uh, has Gary met this goblin before? Or is this a new goblin? Roll a perception check. 19 plus stuff. This is Mixitos. Oh. With uh, makeup to make himself look like a gnome. Howdy, uh, Miss Mistake. How you doing? Welcome, this is a bit awkward. We asked you to come alone, Gary. Hi, I'm Shelly. Hi, Shelly. You were in the Are those candy? Yeah. Can I have some? They're for sale. Ooh. How much? If you have a gold, I'll let you have the whole cart. No? Okay. I'll think about it. All right. Uh, anyways, they all helped contribute to 
paying off the statue fund. Ah, so it... crowdsourcing. I like it. Smart man. So I just thought that it would be good for them to come along. And Dude. also, because the last time you were here, you threatened me, so I wasn't actually going to come by myself. You still mad about that? You know, you did owe us money, and it was kind of a shit move what you did in the first place, yeah. you know, melting our statue, and I'm just I, saying. I didn't do it on purpose. I'm um, just saying. Is, <laughs> is Grooks here? I know you said there's a bat, but I'm just assuming that Gary didn't make the connection. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I just, uh, I came here because I figured it was a more discreet approach. Plus, I've been learning a thing or two from my new friends from Red Fail about disguise. And uh, it works pretty swell. You ain't got to go through. helping you with disguises? Oh, just, uh, I think he calls himself Sass. Oh, of course it's him. Yep. Great guy. Yeah, yeah, you should date him. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to date him. I'm sorry. And so, Guy Ray. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Mistake just like has so many things going through her head right now. She just short circuits and just turns away. <laughs> uh, yeah, Grooks, he's here. He, uh. Oh, um, so I, I baked some crackers for him. The bat immediately flies over and right in front of you morphs into a goblin. I don't think the rest of you have seen this. He looks a lot more normal. Uh, like his head has grown to its normal size again after Griff blew it up. Shelly has no idea who the fuck this is. <laughs> Picture a goblin who is now a vampire. He morphs into a vampire in front of Gary and kind of stares him up because he can't stand <laughs> down. Well. Hello there. I say you ain't got your rich boyfriend here to uh, back you up. Does Griff hear that? I, 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 don't even, that. I don't even want to make you roll for it because I think you rolled well enough to hide. Yeah, you're hearing all of this. He's only a little man. Um, I mean, I baked you crackers to be nice, but I he guess just I don't have them. <laughs> can do contested uh, straight Absolutely you can. against a fucking vampire. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's gonna work. Yeah, he's a goblin vampire. Yeah, uh, maybe Gary has First some of all, experience that's racist. with this now. Hey, 16. 14. Yeah. So Gary just holds them above his head. <laughs> he's like, hey, I made you these to be nice. That ain't funny, Gary. It you're kind of being kind of mean. Rooks is just staring you up as uh, Mixitos tries to take the lead. Boss, boss, come on. Uh, we, we agreed we come here peacefully. So uh, you have our, you have a gold? Yeah, I have it here. The last 18. Excellent, excellent, Gary. It has been a pleasure doing business with you and Rooks is just like, this ain't over. No. Do you mean it's not over? I paid off my debt. Yeah, you did. Yeah, but you see, you also caused a lot of damages socially. See, a lot of the clans, a lot of the guilds are not really... They're looking down at us, Gary, and that ain't right. Well, now that you have the funds to make a new statue, you can make them look up at you again. Yeah, I sure <laughs> hope so. Excuse me. <laughs> Bless you. What are you right now? Uh, Koss is an intimidating form, a dragonborn. Okay. So, just the very tiny, excuse me, <laughs> coming out of a big dragonborn. Bless you. Uh, Mixitos is being really nice. Rooks, not so much. He like morphs into a bat and then like turns into a goblin again on top of the car just to make himself taller. Well, I guess this is it for now. We appreciate you paying off that debt. Minnie has plenty of nice things to say about you, boy. In fact, I've been paying her some visits. She makes me tea. She makes very good tea. She it's does. the only thing she knows how to make. She's been adding coconut water to it. Did you know coconut <laughs> water is a good blood transfusion? It's fucking awesome. I did not know that. Well, no. Only reason I ain't uh, borrowed money from her too, Gary, is because she treats me well. You gonna treat me well if I come back and visit Gary? Depends, are you going to be nice? Maybe. And will you come unannounced? Because usually the rules for inviting someone is you have to be actually directly invited. I'm sure a vampire like you is aware of that. Mixed Toast invited me. <laughs> Mixed Toast doesn't own Croptar. 
it's not his tower, not his dorm room. Shit, is that how it works? <gasps> Mixer tells you didn't tell me shit. You're my you're my science guy. That's you're my <laughs> You know, guy? Yeah, it's one of the downsides of being a vampire. You know, phenomenal undead power. Uh, can't go into other people's living space. <laughs> Ain't nobody tell me that shit! So, maybe keep that in mind. Well, damn. First, there's that, that time it started raining over in Red Fail, now this? Oh, this thing is starting to become more of a hindrance than a gift. You tell that rich boy, Gary, I'm looking for his ass. All right, you tell him that I'm coming someday or another, and you know I'm like 10 times stronger now. Huh? Wow, you're definitely not getting these crackers. Can I, um... Crackers are for people who don't threaten my friends. He will. Can, can he I blew say, up my head. Say something real quick? Maybe. I just, I would like to say that it would probably be, be best for everybody if we just let all of this go behind us. It kind of seems like your business with Gary is done, your business with us can be done, you can move on to bigger and better things. That's what I would suggest. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, look, I, I got a bit of a temper, I'll admit. Like I said, this vampirism thing starting to become more of a hindrance, Gary, and I don't like it. Some upsides, but what, now I get sunburns, I get killed by running water, I get killed by eating a clove of garlic. What the fuck is this shit? Did you just I'll... eat garlic raw before? Yeah, didn't you? I haven't tried it. Well, you should. Oh, I can't It's now. so fucking good. It's so, it's so fucking good. Anyway. Did you say running water? I could just run water over him. <laughs> I'm confused. He starts backing up. <laughs> So... Y'all, you, you, you can't really do that. I do no. have... I can just, like, conjure up a bunch of grains of rice, also. Is that, <laughs> fuck, mix it toes, is that a thing? You're my fucking science guy! You didn't tell me this! Shelly's gonna cast Shape Water and bring some water over, just floating around. Uh, he immediately turns into... Ah, we cool, we cool, we cool! And he turns into a bat and just flies away, <laughs> leaving mix it toes there in awkward silence. That was way easier than... Wow. Yeah, that was really wow. not not sure what he was planning there. Wow. <laughs> you know, I gotta say, ever since he killed the last boss, ever since the last boss took an unfortunate tumbling downstairs. Right, mysterious defenestration happens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ever since then, Grooks has been such a pain in the ass. His boss, he is the strongest of us now. Although. He starts writing shit down. Running water rise, apparently. Yes, um, I don't know that that one's true. Can you ask Aurora at some point if that's not too insensitive, if the thing where if you scatter rice, then they have to stop and count it is a thing? <laughs> I appreciate y'all and the information you've given me here today, albeit inadvertently. <laughs> Sorry, I've been reading too many books. Well, if he does want to come and attack your friend, maybe he'll have to do it alone. Maybe we'll just keep a few buckets of water around. Maybe some grains of rice. I appreciate this. And he's just writing all this down. As for your debt, Gary, I think the guild would look kindly to this. Maybe we won't hit humans as much anymore. At least not this human. At least not that human. Some still suck. But the Izzet League, for now, good terms. We'll rebuild our statue, we'll leave you alone, and, uh, well, this is awkward, so I'm just gonna go. Oh, wait, 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 before you go. Mixitosa was? Yeah. I just, I couldn't help but notice, and Shelly's gonna walk up to them with their wet towel. <laughs> and say, I just, I just couldn't help but notice, and start dabbing at the makeup on their face, and be like, I, it, I feel um, like you got something just, on your face. Um... You rub off some of the, the creamy foundation and there's green underneath oh oh my god uh your either you your skin is a little green mm -hmm. he's a goblin it's fine he's a he's a gnome mm. your friend ain't so bright are they 
<laughs> we'll see you around, maybe. Okay, bye, Mixitos. It's I'll all good. Certainly see you around. He brings a big old like chocolate bar and just hands it to Shelly <gasps> here on the house. Oh my god, thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. Uh, Gary, he holds out his tiny little hand. Gary will shake his hand. Pleasure doing business with you. Say hi to the rich boy for me. Hi! <laughs> when Koss is pretty sure they're out of earshot, Koss will look at hey, Gary and just be like, Is it insensitive if I say that a goblin vampire looks like a tiny Nosferatu? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe, but it's true. That is exactly how I've been picturing Brooks, too. <laughs> Hello everyone! Thank you for joining us again this week. This episode was recorded in Watertown, Massachusetts, also known as the traditional land of the Pekoset and Nanantum peoples. I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of the talented musicians that helped bring this podcast to life with their amazing music. We've provided a link to their web pages in the description. I would also like to thank our talented players, Tyler Rubin, Amelia Markopoulos, Rin Garnett, Michael Yang, and Nikki Aguilar Thompson. This story would not be the same without their wonderful creativity. I've been your host and DM, Alex Aguilar Thompson, and I hope to see you here again next week for another episode of Roleplay Radio. Would you like more boiling water? Oh! No, I'm good. Thank you, our, our twisty McTwist face. <laughs> what did you call him? Oh, uh, was it Fixie Mix? Our Mc... twisty McTwist face was the name given to me by this student. Shall we start another poll? His name is RC, sweetheart. Archivist unit retrofitted for combat, entertainment, and engineering, right? Correct. <laughs> oh, when I t when I fell down the rope, he said to call him Twisty Miss Twist Face. That I said Fixie Mick Fix Face, which is the name given to me by the student body in a popular vote. No, your name is RC, like I gave you. I'd like to abbreviate. Don't don't mind me. I, uh, listen, Shelley. You can drink more than water, you know. I think the idea behind your friend asking you to do this is that you might drink a lot. I've been there myself, believe me. I was a, a youth once, too. Oh, I know. I mean, it's a dare. It's just supposed to be fun. But you look miserable. You know, it's... it's. I don't... I don't... I don't drink a lot of water. <laughs> That's what your friends told me. RC, can you at least get Shelly Shell uh, ice cold water, none of this boiling water? I will. Oh no, that's I... okay. That's okay, RC. I, I, I'm, I'm okay, Lucio. Okay, if you say so. By the way, did I ever show you? And Shelly pulls out the rock. Did I ever show you what happened when I put it through the 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 the, the, I... the, the Snorlax? I just. This... I just assumed that it didn't work since you never came back to me. Oh, I got I got a little sidetracked. But 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 every time that I touch this and someone else touches it. Wait, don't tell me. Show me. <laughs> <laughs> and she holds out her stump. <laughs> and stump meets stump. <laughs>